Hello, this is Fruitcake Tony, and we are ranking the Van Halen albums. Got Johnny Bean, Mr. Bent Tom. <laughs> I can do that too. Nice. Gentlemen. <laughs> hey. How's it going? Great. Great. Thank, thank you for having me here, you guys. Yeah, welcome. Nice to Thank see you. Tony. Nice to see you guys. How's Ned doing today? Good. <laughs> oh, he's great. Yeah. Where is he? He's around here somewhere. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. he's awesome. Cool. <laughs> awesome. So we are going to rank the Van Halen studio albums. One through awesome. twelve, or twelve through one. Um, nice. Yeah, yeah. That's good. I got my list. Um. Oh, so you already have a list? Oh yeah. Oh, man. Okay. I, I think I you might know these albums a little bit, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be all right. I can do this. I've got pictures of them here, so I can see each one. Oh, cool. I can see each one, so that'll help. All right. So what we're going to do is we'll go around the horn. We'll start with you, Johnny. And um, let's start at at the bottom, number 12. Um, what is your number 12 Van Halen studio album? So number 12, meaning, meaning all the way, like At the, the one, the one that I, I wouldn't pick, I'd pick 11 before I pick that one then. Right. That's right. Okay. I hate to say it, but Van Halen won. Oh, mm. <laughs> I hate to say that. Um, but the reason for that is I've heard it so much, like every song on that record, you know, because, you know, like I've said, you know, for years over on my channel, the first record I ever bought was 5150. After that, I bought Van Halen one. Yeah. So I grew up on both all these years, you know, since right. 1986, you know, yeah. when I when I first got into well, I got into Van Halen in 85. But since 86, I've been like a major, major fan. So. So that being the second record I ever had, I've heard it a mm. billion, a billion times. Um, and I mean, it is, it is amazing. I mean, it is what it is. And I know you're probably going to get a lot of thumbs downs from me saying that. Sorry. Uh, no, I, um, I, I'm surprised. <laughs> I, I am surprised. Um, but yeah, just the fact that I've heard it so much. And, and um, that's really the reason. That's really that's yeah. really the reason. Right. Right. I mean, not that there's a bad song on there, but I've just I've heard it so much. That's 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 the reason for that. Wow. Okay. All right. <laughs> how about how about you, Tom? What's your uh, I don't think there's any albums I don't like, but if I have to pick one, it's 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 got to be Van Halen 3 for me. And it's not because of, I like a lot of the, I love the playing on it. And I like a lot of like the hooks and the courses, but I feel like to me, some of, there's a couple songs I love on there, but to me, some of the songs don't seem like, like maybe they didn't have enough time to flesh them out to me. Like it almost seems like some of it was, and I could be completely wrong. And Johnny, I'm sure know much better than me, but some of it to me seems rushed. I well, I what what I think what I think it is is some of the songs they're just too long and they have too many parts. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like one like, is almost eight minutes, right? You know, it's a long it's, album too. Some of some of those tunes, you know, you could take one tune and have two or three tunes out of that one. Right. So I think there's a lot of material there, but it's kind of like someone took all the paints to me and was like, 
threw them all down at once. The plane's mm. amazing as always. I mean, the, you know, like I love, uh, you know, uh, I, I like Fire in the Hole. Yeah. I mean, I like Ballad of Bullets. There's a lot I like on there. Um, you know, even, even I'm not going to name specific tracks, but some that people, I guess, would rag on on that album, certain tracks. Like you said, there's certain parts in it, and you're like, this could have been its own song. And I think it would be much cooler if maybe that one part was its own song. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I had to make a choice. So for me, that was number 12. Yeah, right. Okay, I guess it's on me. All right. <laughs> My number 12 is also 1998's Van Halen 3. Um, Man. I love the album. I, I gave it a chance. Um, nothing against it, but just how it stacks on, on this list. But the the thing was live. It didn't, for me, live, it, it just wasn't there, you know. Um, I like the songs. I still like the songs. Um, and I hate to have it on the bottom, but something's got to be on the bottom. And so there you go. Um, yeah. Man. So, um, sorry, Gary. <laughs> Love you, dude. All right. So. <laughs> Number 11, Johnny, what's your number 11? <clears throat> Man, um, I, I would have to say, oh, I hate to say it. I'm going to have to say a different kind of truth. <laughs> Sorry, Gary. Oh, wait, Gary wasn't on that one. Uh, Sorry, Dave. No. And, and <laughs> I would, and I would say the reason for that. Uh, again, I just I heard it so much. I mean, truth, truthfully, um, this isn't my channel, so I guess I can tell the truth, huh? Mm -hmm. yeah, of course. <laughs> okay, I I would say even when I first bought that record, I had already was kind of burned out because I went and I, I heard all the, um, the previews on iTunes. Like you get a minute and a half preview of each tune. And I had burned those onto a CD. So I was in the car listening to all these previews, like for however long until the record came out. And when, when I first downloaded the record off iTunes, when it first, when it was first released, I pretty much knew every song already. I just hadn't heard the guitar solos. There was no solos in those previews. Oh. So I remember I remember almost like putting the record on and fast forwarding to the solos because I'd already heard everything else. Ah. You know? Right. So again, again, that'd have to be my number eleven because I just I heard it so much. You know, and and you know, a lot of those tunes were were kind of reworked from old demos that I'd heard you know for years and years and years already you know like like uh bullet head was a live song they had out um she's the woman i mean most of those out of space uh, out of space yeah I, I that was that was something else i guess yep um uh Ch chinatown something else or was that new that was new okay Ch chinatown I was new uh uh you and your blues was new, and I'd have, I'd have to say that's my favorite tune on on the record. Was you and your blues because it was so new, mm -hmm. yeah, right. you know, and it had a it had kind of the classic, classic Van Halen sound to it, which I guess they all did. Um, but yeah, so sorry. <laughs> there you go, a different kind of truth. All right, Tom. I, I'm also, yeah, I'm also going with different kind of truth for uh, number eleven. Um, a lot of the same reasons uh, Johnny said. I love hearing the old like demo stuff, but a lot of it seemed like a repeat from there. I mean, I really liked, you know, um, 
when I first heard Tattoo, I thought the beginning of the song was kind of hokey, but I actually love that hook. I think the hook in that song is great. I don't know what it is, but yeah, you know, I just it, it's not a musical qualification that I can tell you why I look, you know, why I like it. Something about the melody in that hook. Yeah, um, me too. It doesn't get old to me. Exactly, but uh, and in uh, is it Chinatown with the? It's got the real like the. It's it, tapping at the beginning that kind of accelerates up the neck. I love that that intro yeah. when I first heard that. That was just, but you know, I gotta pick a spot, so that's number eleven for me. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't, I don't feel as bad now, so. <laughs> you shouldn't feel bad anyway because I know you love them all. I love them all. It's just like gotta yeah. go in some order, right? Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I know. All right, so. Um. I hate to be boring here. I I've had my list here at my desk for for weeks, um, but my eleven is also a different kind of truth. <laughs> it is. Um, oh, and, and there was no collaboration. I mean, I had my list before I got yeah. on the phone today, so it's I've legit. never met these guys. I, so. <laughs> I know nothing about either of you guys' list. Um, I don't even have out. a list. I, 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 I just jumped into this. this. I jumped into this cold. Yeah, he was kidnapped, and he was told if he would be released if he did a list of twelve. <laughs> 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 Sorry, go ahead, Tony. Okay, now it, it it's gonna start getting interesting here. Um, all right, so. Our top 10. Number 10, Johnny. Mm. Oh, man. Let's see. I, w I would have to go with uh, Van Halen 2. And again, I've heard it so much. Um, I don't know. I, that, Van Halen too. That's one of those records where you kind of have to take a break from it for a while. I think, like you know, don't listen to it for a number of years. Put it on, and it's 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 fresh again. There's something about something about that record, you know, like 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 uh, light up the sky and Ooh. and um, something about those those tunes. Um, but. Uh, are we doing? Can we do trivia too? Yeah, go for it, man. <laughs> well, you know the, the 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 beginning of or the the uh, the the beginning of uh, uh, "You're No Good" is the ending of of Tattoo, right? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Wow, I never thought of that. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, it blew, blew my mind. I'm gonna have to go listen to both of those again. I know exactly the part you mean. I'm just thinking, like, I'm hearing it in my head. Like, you knew that, Tom. I didn't put two and two together though. It's like when someone says, you know, like I don't know, when someone points out something to you, the volume, you the volume swells in the chords. It's the same. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's the same thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah. So oh. my my top ten is is uh, Van Halen too. And again, because I'd heard it so much, but if I was to put it on right now, I'd probably change my mind. Mm. And, you know. So. Yeah. I Van Halen I'll... too is when I when I hopped on Van Halen when I yeah that was the album so that started it for me yeah so, so you but, bought it when it came out um shortly thereafter and went and saw them that year as an opening act um yeah mm -hmm. but. It's on up my list. I'm not going to tell you where um, <laughs> just yet. All right, Tom, you're number 10. I hope I don't ruffle any feathers. My number 10 is um, OU812. And again, yeah. it's, just a, it's just, I know, it's a choice. It's an order choice. It's, I struggle with that one and my next one. And I'll just, without saying my next one yet, I'll just say that it came down to I liked more of the songs as a whole on the next, on number nine. And that's why I put this one at number 10. But 
I mean, I love that album. It's just, it's hard for me to choose. I mean, probably my favorite on that album is, mm, for me, it's either going to be like uh, When It's Love or I, I, I still love AFU, that, that opening oh, riff. Oh, yeah. yeah. That Absolutely. opening riff to me, it's like, I remember learning to play that opening riff and I'm like, okay, I'm playing the same notes, but something about, it's like the first time he plays the A minor arpeggio and ain't talking about love. There's something about that first recording on tape when it hits the flanger and it's that octave is just at the right peak. And it sounds like a lion growling that I've, I've sat there for four hours and tried to get that flanger just right on there. And like when he hit that in the studio, he hit it. And I've even heard Eddie do it live and not hit it. But that one in the studio, the flanger hits perfectly on that note. And to me, it's like that same thing on a AFU, that one, it's almost like a half harmonic he hits. And it's like replicating that to me is like this elusive thing. And I love that about it. But again, it just was like, you know, I had to pick it to go somewhere. So begrudgingly, I put OU812 at nine. Oh, no. I love OU812. I love it, too. I love it, too. I, I love great. it. Just... Monsters of rock memories, dude. Holy moly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hearing it those songs. Oh, gosh. I mean, it might have hit me differently, too, because when it came out, I was only like 11. So, so maybe I had a different perspective. I don't know. All right. So, um, my number 10, Johnny's going to kill me for this. Um, <laughs> I think I know what it is. Oh, here we go. And not that I don't like it, but it has to rank somewhere. But my number 10 is the 1995 album Balance. Wow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I thought the previous record was really good um it just to me um it felt like that the songs weren't done like it was rushed um yeah it it um it just seemed less than the previous offering um you know so oh so you're talking about balance balance yeah oh, okay i thought you're talking about about um 0812 being rushed no 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 they balance. worked on that for a long time <laughs> they they did each album you have to understand from 1981 on i bought these albums the day they came out Mm -hmm. So having experienced each album and tour and each era and each everything excited on each offering as always, you know, but it, 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 I like balance. Don't get me wrong, but it, it's, it's not in my upper echelon of my list here. I'm sorry to say. Um. Yeah. Um, it's okay. That's okay. At least, at least it's on the list. It is. It is. All right. So, number nine. Oh. Number nine, Johnny. Oh my gosh. Uh, let's see. Number nine. I would, I would have, oh man. Number nine, I'd, I'd have to go for a uh, diver down. Um, That's what I guessed you'd say. I'm trying to do the right. math in my head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know why. I mean, there's just, I'm looking at all the other records here. I'm thinking, you know, I kind of, all the other ones I'd probably pick, you know, a little first, I guess. Yeah. But but again, you know, I've heard 
if anybody's new here, you know, I've I've been listening to Van Halen for a long time, and I talk about Van Halen nonstop on my channel. You know, right here, nonstop. Mm -hmm. Um, so can just look at all the Van Halen guitars and stuff in the background. That should tell you. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've I've got all all kinds of stuff sitting here. You know, oh all yeah, kinds of different different big things. EDH and got a Wolfgang behind you and yeah, the the little amp. You know, I, everything. I, Johnny, I was getting excited. I thought you were going to get out the. Uh, I thought you were going to get out the. Um, the uh, Ripley guitar the other day, and then you were talking about you know that you had it. It's it, that it's put away, and I was like, I was getting excited. I've never seen oh. that one. Oh, you've you've never seen it. I've never seen I'll, that one. I'll have to bring it out. I'll have to bring it out. It's That's it's in the cool. loft. It's, and if anyone hasn't watched, you got to check out uh, Johnny Bean's uh, Saturday Night from. Uh, well, it would be the twelfth. If you're watching this in the future, December twelfth, twenty twenty. But man, that was yeah. awesome. That was awesome. Especially since, you know, I don't know if you want to mention that at all, Johnny, but you know, just talking about Jason Becker and Eddie and that you guys know Jason personally. So that was cool mm -hmm. to hear from perspective of people that are actually friends with him and not just fans. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And, Very and cool. to, to tell you the truth, I, I wasn't a fan before I met him. Oh, really? So no. I mean, not oh, wow. really. I mean, I mean, I had the album that he was on with Roth. Yeah. Right. Um, but, you know, I mean, we can talk about this another time, I guess. But, oh, sure. you know, every time a Van Halen record came out or a Roth record came out, I always went Van Halen, no mm -hmm. matter what it was. It was always Van Halen. And then maybe I'll get the Roth stuff. Yeah. You know? But I knew who Becker was. And my friend Dave Lopez, who was on with us last night. Yeah. He uh, he kind of he kind of grew up. You know, around Jason, took guitar lessons from him. You know, awesome. and, and yeah, he introduced me to him about ten years ago. After years and years and years of telling me about the the guy, yeah, you know, um, he, he, he he had to know you long enough to suss you out and then say, "Now I can introduce you to him." Right? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Oh, and they're great. I mean, yeah. you know, the, no, Dave's the an awesome guy, man. The stories were phew, that was awesome. Yeah, yeah, great he's a man. Thank you, man. Yeah, Thank it you. was. It I mean, was. I was like, you know, because a lot of times, like by two thirty, I'm falling asleep or two o'clock. But man, I was with you the whole time last night. <laughs> that was a great. Yeah, show. if you love Van Halen, you already watched Johnny Bean. Of course. You know. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. All right, Tom. What all is right. your number nine here? So my number nine, I got to go with balance. Uh, love the songs. You know, I love the whole album. It's just kind of getting down to, I guess, making choices now. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I love the song Amsterdam, Seventh Seal. Um, I love the Don't Tell Me, just the beginning that, you know, he's still innovating, doing different stuff, you know, with like the pick at the angle. And like, I remember seeing that. I think, was it New Year's Eve they released the video for that? And I'm like, what the hell is he doing? Because it's like this rah, 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 rah sound. I'm like, that is awesome. Right. Yeah. I like remember staying guy. up. Yeah, I, I remember up still. I stayed up. I, I remember playing my guitar, you know. I had the the, uh, the 5150 head. This is before I had the cabinet. So I had the head wired into my PV Stereo Chorus 212 combo. The original head. Yeah. Yeah, I had the same PV5150 yeah. head, but I had an old Sun 4x12 because I couldn't yet afford the 5150 4x12. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, I was sitting on my buddy's old couch in his basement, you know, with like popcorn ceiling. And we're like, all right, when's the video coming on? <laughs> and I was like, shut up, shut up, I'm listening. Like, I was like three feet from the screen. I'm like, wait, okay, I'm trying to look at Eddie's guitar. Did he change anything? Wait, okay. Yeah, his hair is different. Okay, let me check that out. Let me see. Just nerding out the whole time. My friends are like, come do this, hang out. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm watching this. Yeah. You know? Man. That was awesome. I love that album, but that's my number. Uh, I guess that's number uh, nine. Number nine for you. Okay. So my number nine, Johnny, is also 1982 Diver Down. Um, yeah. It, it it after a great great 1981 album um, with the covers um, 
I, I liked it. I got into it. Um, you know, I like the originals on it. Um, great live show that year in 82. Um, mm -hmm. But the album, it, yeah, they, they grabbed some covers and said, here, you know. Um, well, if, if you want to talk about Rushed, I think that was, I think that album was, was, was rushed. Yeah. Be oh yeah. You know, because I mean the, the, f the first single, they rushed to put a single out. Yeah. You know, Purdue woman, they rushed to make the video. They rushed to make the song intruder to fit the music video. Yeah. And then uh, to have all those covers, some of them they'd already played, you know, in, in the clubs, you know, and then Dave and Ted, it shows that you know they're rushing when when they took when when they forced Eddie to use a piece of music that he was working on for a cover, right? You know, dancing in the street, that riff, that keyboard riff, Eddie was working that up for an original tune. Right. Um, and then, yeah, and then to even to have Happy Trails on there as a track, I mean, yeah, yeah. Again, it's great. It's great, but but um, like you were mentioning, like like you thought balance was was rushed. I think Diver Down was definitely, yeah, definitely oh, rushed. Yeah. Although I think all those early records were kind of kind of rushed, but because they were putting out a record a year, a record in a year, yeah. So they, you know, record hit the road right. Next year, record, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess the first five were what 79 80 80 78 79 80 80 182 yeah yeah every single yeah. year well i guess it would have been less than a year if it's you know if you include i mean how quick could they get off tour and get in the studio i guess right away is that what they did like literally get home and a lot of artists did it that way in those days and things kind of changed after that it, you know it was a couple years or so in between albums but you know which it ought to be i think um, they would they would record each record in like a matter of days or like weeks. Yeah, or I got, like a week. Yeah, I, I I pulled up the dates when I was doing it, and the amount of time they spent in the studio was like they literally must have just been doing like two three takes a song and being like, all right, that's good. Like you know, we nailed it. That's you know, oh, yeah, a couple it's amazing of times, right. to think that the the takes they got in that limited amount of time. But it just goes to show you they were just nailing it every time. I'm sure, like, you oh, know, yeah. oh yeah, you know, that's insane. Well, I guess too, you have you know, analog tape cost a lot of money. And when I first started working in a recording studio, we were still on two inch tape, and that was my first job was splicing two inch tape, which I would hated. I can understand why people hate it, you know, with the razor blade all day. But tape gets expensive. We had to buy our own tape to do our own projects, and I'm like, you know, even if you're Van Halen, you know, I mean, if you start running twelve hours a day of tape. Stuff's not cheap. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. so I'm sure Warner Brothers is saying, "Yeah, do it quick." You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, Johnny. What is your number eight? Ah, uh, let's see, number eight. Let's see. Do that one. That one. That one. Uh. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go with Van Halen 3. I haven't said that one yet. VH3, number 8. I, I, I love the album. Um, I consider it Edward's solo record. Yeah. You know, because if there was no vocals on it, it's totally his solo album. Mm -hmm. um, and how, how you guys, you were talking about... Uh, you know, the song structures were very different. That goes to show you, you know, Roth and, and Hagar, as far as their arranging, the song arrangements. Right. Because at any time you, you replace somebody, no matter who it is, it changes. Oh, yeah. No matter. No, no matter who it is. No matter what they play or their role in the in the band, the dynamic is is different. Yeah. Some, sometimes better, sometimes worse. Um. But I, I love Van Halen 3. I've always loved, 
you know, all the ideas on there, all the riffs. Um, but it it, it would it would have been great to hear the next one. I think. I I think I think yeah. what they what 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 they should have done was was gone on a tour first, and played all the all the hits, all the classics, threw some new ones in there, and then come home record that record. I think it it would have made a, a huge difference. Yeah, you know, and then to hear the album after that, which I guess they did record, it was just never put out. Um, that would have been amazing, and and maybe one day, you know, we'll get to hear yeah hear now, some of that. Which Johnny, if anyone would know this, I'm sure you will. Uh, I was listening to the other day uh, the Dweezil Zappa podcast, Running with the Dweezil, and mm -hmm. he had uh, Paul Gilbert on, and Paul Gilbert was talking about Eddie inviting him to fifty one fifty. And I don't, I, I'm curious what era this was. He said he started playing all the vocal melodies to these tracks on the guitar. He said he had all the vocal melodies all worked out with inflections and everything on the guitar. And he said, like, he was like, that would be crazy. And he said he was recording all of it. He had it all on tape. And he's like, you know, he was just talking about Dweezil. Like, I wonder if we'll ever hear that. But he said, literally, and then uh, Paul Gilbert, actually, in the interview, if you go watch it, listen to it, it's just audio. But... Mm -hmm. Paul Gilbert worked out. He said, I spent four hours and I started working out David Lee Roth, like vocals on guitar. And he mm -hmm. said, you can hear those David Lee Roth vocals. If you play them on guitar, they sound like Eddie riffs. Yeah. I heard, I, I listened to some of that the other day. Yeah, isn't, isn't that crazy? <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Um, I that was cool. When was that? When, when Paul went over there? I don't know. I was trying to figure out when he went. I don't. Um, what I had heard, because you know Paul has severe hearing damage. Yes. Like severe. severe. Yeah, he wears I mean, the big very, headphones and now very, very bad. And I've met him a couple times, and yeah, and and when I talked to him, I asked him about his his earphones, you know. And actually, I saw a pair of them um, in in San Francisco in the city. There's a a, a woman that does does molds for hearing uh, protection. Oh, okay. And actually, I had them done. I've got them here somewhere. She's like um, an audiologist. They uh, go and they measure. They pour the molds and yeah, 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 yeah. And and she she knows uh, Paul Gilbert. She knows uh, uh, Pete. You know from the Who. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, Paul had donated a pair of those headphones wow. to go to charity, and they were signed. And I remember looking at them and holding them, and they had a little speaker built in to like one side or something. Um, but I remember hearing a story how, how Paul Gilbert, when he was there at 5150, Eddie had played some tracks for him, like so loud that possibly contributed to some of his hearing damage. Wow. I think he had said that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now, you know, I, I mean, maybe, maybe I'm just off on this, but I never had heard talk over the years about Eddie having any hearing damage. But didn't he always have it blisteringly loud? Or I can't imagine he was always wearing hearing protection, was he? Um, in the early days, no, he never did. No. And he that was like that was full on PA because now it's line array PAs. You can get away with more if you're not. But they were pushing all those low mid frequencies then that are really bad on the ears. You know, back in the early days. Mm -hmm. All all those guys hearing is you know even a little um not great yeah yeah mm -hmm. even myself i i have hearing damage i mean i can hear i mean i i, I can hear everything but i've got severe tinnitus in this ear mm. so like if i were yeah I, what it sounds it sounds like i've got like a, a fluorescent lamp hanging right above my head right here just buzzing non-stop mm. that's what i hear all yeah. the time and that that was from uh, from an accident at a rehearsal one time where somebody was, was it, it got louder and louder and louder. And I was wearing earplugs when this happened. So imagine yeah. if I wasn't wearing them, what it would have been like. You probably would have burst your whatever tempan, uh, whatever the membrane is, you probably would have burst that. I, I don't know, but it's, it, it's, uh, I mean, I've gotten used to it. It's been 10 years. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm used to the buzzing and ringing and, but I'm very careful. Like everywhere I go, if I go to a show, I always have hearing protection. And, yeah. you know, when I go to Nam, I walk around with, with ear 
plugs in my pocket you know Be yeah best thing someone ever told me i go to like home depot and buy like a hundred packs of just disposable ones and i put them on every amp that i might play around the house mm -hmm. and then i put them in my car because that's the thing you end up at a show and you're like i don't have any hearing protection and i'll have like five of them in the car i'm like all right here here's some for everybody you know it might not be you know high end but at least you get disposable and knock off what 30 decibels yeah yeah Take i'm very in. i'm very careful when i go to a rehearsal or 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 something I'm always aware of where the monitors are. If there's speakers like up above, like head level, anything head level, I'm always careful. Like before I walk in front of something, cover your ears or because you never know when feedback is going to come through that and just stabs you right. In the, that's what happened to me. I got basically stabbed in the ear with with sound. Wow. Um, so you you yours was not necessarily from the volume. It was from the SPL, the actual pressure level. It was a sudden hit. It was a sudden. What it was, it was a sudden uh, hit of somebody hitting a wah pedal. There you go. At an amp head level, and I just happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. Bang! And I was wearing earplugs though. So imagine if I wasn't, how much worse it would be. You know? Yeah. Well, that happened to my buddy RJ when we were down in Miami. We went surfing, and a surfboard. He tried to teach me to go surfing, and surfboard hit him in the ear, and he had busted the eardrum and he was afraid he was going to lose hearing in the oh, ear for like three weeks and he's freaking out and then it was fine i guess but crazy stuff yeah so where are we at tony sorry what number are we at we number are eight number eight <laughs> what is right. your number eight my number eight all right let me get down to my number eight let's see hmm My number eight is I'm gonna have to go with uh, Diver Down. I mean, I love the album, but you know, for <laughs> similar reasons to what you guys mentioned before. I mean, a lot of covers. I mean, I love Cathedral, Hang 'Em High, Where Have All the Good Times Gone, Secrets is great. You know, I like the the tone and the feel in Pretty Woman. I'm not a huge. I was never a huge Dancing in the Streets fan, although I do love the the intro sound. You know, and I love little guitars. Yeah, um, oh, yeah, it's very unique, but I mean, it's just you know, I guess there's other stuff I like more. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, I, I I agree. Um, okay, so we're on number eight. My number eight is OU812. Oh, um, <laughs> it's got to go somewhere, it's got to go somewhere. Um, I love the album. Love, love the tour. Yeah. We drove to DC and watched the monsters of rock that year. Me and a buddy of mine. So glad I made that road trip. Um, I love those songs. Um, I don't think OU812 was as good as the record before or the record after. My opinion. Um, but yeah, love those songs though. Um, went and saw the Monsters tour and then went back and watched them in the arena leg in the fall. A after the monsters tour um yeah um but yeah so that is my number eight um okay johnny number seven uh let's see what have i done here um Number seven. Uh, I would have to go with. I'd have to go with balance. Just because. <laughs> I'm surprised, Johnny. I am. I am shocked. Um. Again, I know. Before every every record, we say, "Oh." I'm sorry, you know I don't. I don't really mean this. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I mean, again, I love the record, but same thing. I've I've heard, I mean, I've I've heard all of these like so much, like a billion times. But there's certain ones I can listen to more, mm -hmm. you know. And some of the ones we're gonna get to, you know, coming up are the ones I guess I can I can listen to again and again and again more often. I'm surprised. You know? hey, if I was a gambling man, I would have bet knowing you, Johnny, that would have been your number one. Really? Yeah, mm -hmm. really. No. I think I know what Johnny's number one is from what he talks about, but you know, we'll see. <laughs> I'm not I'm not even sure yet. I'm not even sure yet. I'm gonna have to figure this out. I think it changes day to day for me sometimes too, so who knows? <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, Tom. You're number seven, dude. All right, number seven. Ah, uh, this is a tough choice. I hate to do this. I think I'm going to get knocked for this one. But for me, number seven's got to be, I got to go 5150. Um, I love the album, just like all the other ones. Um, I guess there's just six more that I... I like more than that. I mean, it's, you know, what, what's there not to like about it? I mean, I, it's a great album, you know, I mean, from the trans tram stuff to the, you know, you got dreams, from, you got love. Walks to finish. From yeah. Start I, mean, to finish. I can listen to Well, that's most of them, but that album specifically, I can listen to the whole thing from start to finish and not skip anything. It's just, you know, I guess it had to go somewhere. Well, mm -hmm. when that record came out, after Roth had left, we were hungry for Van Halen. Um, and hearing why can't this be love first was like, oh no. <laughs> that that was the first impression. Oh but no. What, but it, it really was you know, like but up, but up. I was like, oh no, I was counting on some but when the record came out smoking hot from from start to finish um <laughs> I love like the word. yeah smoking hot yeah so uh, yeah i'm a little surprised tom it's, it's on down there but um i'm about to shock you tom with my number seven. Oh no I hate to do it to you, my brother. I hate to do it to you. Go ahead. Number, I know what it is. Number seven on my list is 1980s Women and Children First. Oh. 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 <laughs> if it wasn't you, Tony, or if it wasn't like you or Johnny saying that, it would kill me. But I know you guys are bigger fans even than than me and i love van halen my whole life so <laughs> I, I get it you got to put it somewhere but oh it's a rough one uh that's all right tom so what do you it's like about that one what's the positive stuff you like about it i like the whole record everything it's just um, gotta go somewhere right yeah i i mean it does i <laughs> mean it 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 um yeah, I'm, I bought that right after it came out, and it kicked ass. Loved it. Still love it. Um, but, yeah, it's got to go somewhere. It's got to go somewhere. There, There is a number of them still that I like more. Um, not that I don't like it. Um, I love it. Um, For sure. Yeah. So that's my number seven, women and children first. All right. So we are halfway there. Nice. We are at the halfway point and we're going to enter our top six. Starting with you, Johnny. What's your number six? Oh, I just happened to write it down, <laughs> but I'm scrambling to figure out my top five now. <laughs> um, okay. For number six, I wrote down carnal knowledge. Um, and again, I'm sorry. 
<laughs> I love it. I love it. But yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm, what can what can you really say? I mean, it's it's amazing. I mean, the songs are amazing. Some of the songs I've grown to love even more now, years later. And um, I've said this on my show a few times. When when I when I first heard uh, Carnal Knowledge, I heard pretty much the whole record on uh, on the radio. They would do these album premieres live from fifty one fifty, and the band members would talk in between songs. They would talk during the songs. You know, that's when Eddie uh, talked about how he discovered the the drill. You know, yeah. which he used in, in Pound Cake. Um, and. I think the last song they played during that premiere live on the radio was was uh I think it was Man on a Mission. I yeah. think. And I remember when 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 that when that when I heard that for the first time, I was like, hmm. That was the first time I ever heard a Van Halen song that I really wasn't super into, you know? Um and then fast forward actually up until just a couple of few years ago uh i had a facebook friend that happened to buy a, a dat tape you know one of these things i've got this brand new one sitting here for years um he, he won an auction for a dat tape that belonged to andy johns oh wow mm -hmm. and andy johns of course produced carnal knowledge right mm -hmm. yes he also produced the the live right here right now record All right which really wasn't live and i tried to get into this list before we started but um <laughs> technically that is a studio record um but anyway anyway so this facebook friend of mine you know buys this that tape and he ends up putting it online you know and i end up hearing it was like i think it was like two tracks i think it was it was the the tracks for in and out and man on a mission both from the right here right now sessions all right so it's these two tracks you know the music but no vocals mm. and actually there was a third track of sammy singing where he's you can tell he's in the studio singing and at the end of the song he's like he's like okay i'm out of here so you could tell you know he wouldn't say that on stage right um but when i heard man on a mission without the vocals I got it. I there was something about it. I I think it was sorry, Sammy. There was something about the vocals on that on that the studio record song. When I first heard it, I'm like, nah. But hearing it instrumentally, it, it changed it. Totally I love changed, that tune. changed it for me. Yeah, yeah, I love that tune. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. and I I love that album. I love Judgment Day. I love uh, Pound Cake, Top of the World, Three Sixteen. I mean, all of it. All of it, but again, it has to go somewhere. So yeah, number six. Number six for Johnny. Carnal knowledge. All right, Tom. For number six, I also have 1991's for unlawful carnal knowledge. Oh, um, wow. Had to go somewhere. <laughs> um, you know, like Johnny said, I love it. Um, Man on a Mission is my favorite song. I think Pleasure Dome is my second favorite song on the whole album. And both of those, I know, uh, I think it's, is it, is Pleasure Dome, I think they play as a three piece, no vocals in right here, right now, right? Isn't that the, and that to me yeah. was hearing that without the vocals, just the three of them jamming. That's what really turned me on to that song. Um, Man on a Mission, I felt the same way. Like, I, I, I hate to say this and sound negative, but I felt like Sammy's vocals on that were kind of cheesy sounding. But if you don't, listen to the vocals as you were saying johnny and you just concentrate on the music the ba -dum -ba -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -ba -da, that part is awesome you know the descending part where they're both tapping he does the the bass line um yeah with the guitar i, I mean the whole kind of reminds great. me of light up the sky mm -hmm. where one goes high and one goes low yeah yep um so anyway so i love had to go somewhere, right? right? Yeah. And even my sister liked right now, and my sister doesn't even like rock music. So, you know. <laughs> well, guys, I, I, I thought our list were going to be teetotally opposite, but my number uh -oh. six, my number six, <laughs> drum roll.
is also for unlawful carnal knowledge. <laughs> it is. <laughs> there you go. So yeah, it it um great album. Great album. Um yeah. And they played really, really well that night in Raleigh in 91. It was such a good show. Um, you know, um, Ed was on. I mean, on. Yeah. Um, yeah, by October cool October evening outside at a outdoor amphitheater. Um, comfortable, no jacket, just a little cool. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I remember it so well. Oh gosh. Um, but that's my number six. Um, yeah. Great album. All right, so our top five. It's getting good. Johnny, who's your number five here? Oh, man. Let me see. I'm actually going the – I'm writing them the opposite way. Okay. Uh, where am I? So in between, between these two. Uh. Here we go. Okay, my number six. No, number five. Yeah. Is that right? My number five is Fair Warning. Um, again, I love it. <laughs> I love it, but there's there was four others that I love a little bit more, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um. I remember the first day I, I bought the tape, found it at, at some penny dollar store somewhere. Uh, brought it back, listen, you know, listened to it, Mean Street. Um, yeah, I don't know. Again, it's great. It's great. Um, what yeah, can I say? I love Fair Warning. Um. Yeah, of all the tones of Eddie in, in the years in the albums, that's the tone I like the best. Um, yeah. Wow. Fair warning. Yeah. But it it is, um, I'm not going to say where it is on my list, but um, yeah, love fair warning. Love fair warning. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Fair warning, Lord. All right, Tom. It's getting Bye. tough. It's getting tough. I don't want to go here, but I got to put for my number five, I got to put Van Halen one. And I think it's a little bit of what Johnny said. I just, <laughs> for about a five year period, I mowed lawns and I would have that cassette in my cassette player. And I had other Van Halen ones in there too, but just that. And I think at one point, I, I don't think I learned all the solos, but you know, all the other parts in the songs, I learned every song on that album at one point. And it was like, maybe it's just like if I took a break from it for like five years, but I think I've heard it so much that it's still awesome. I love it, but. I got to put it at number five. Wow. It's getting tough. It is. It's getting yeah. real tough. <laughs> Has to go somewhere. Yeah. Has to go somewhere. All right. So my number five is Van Halen 2. And that's the year that Van Halen came up on my radar screen. That's the first Van Halen album I ever got. Um, I heard Dance the Night Away on the radio 
went and saw them over in Raleigh. They were the opening act, Boston, the Outlaws, a couple other. And after watching Van Halen, I was like, holy smokes. Um, yeah. And it, I was hooked at that point. Van mm -hmm. Halen, too. Yep. Um, I was middle school. 13 years old, I think. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Van cool. Halen, too. Yeah, love it. Still love it. Um, brings back great memories, you know, of everything in my life at that time. Um, music really changed. I was a young um, music fan learn and then guitar and once i saw eddie play i'm like holy everything changed every the whole all the music changed everything changed um mm -hmm. yeah in van halen too right there yeah so that is my number five yeah all right Number four, Johnny. <laughs> I already wrote the rest of mine down, so I know what they are now. Um, number four for me is OE812. And that record was huge for me. Huge. That was the first. Well, that's not true. No, yeah. The first record I ever bought was 5150. Um. And it was brand new at the time, but the first one to come out, like as a fan already, would have been O Eight One Two. And then when When It's Love came out, the video for that, I loved the video. Um, I loved, you know, Mine All Mine, you know, that tune. That was the first tour I ever saw them on. Was oh. Uh, oh, it was cool. right right after Monsters of Rock? They did the the arena tour afterwards. Yeah, in, in the winter. And that's right. when I that's when I first saw them. So for me, O Eight One Two is very it's very special. There's something yeah. very special about it because you know it's like one of the first Van Halen new records to come out at the time when I was a kid. Yeah, right. Um, nice. But yeah. Anyway, so number four, O Eight One Two. Nice, nice, Johnny. All right, Tom, you're number four. It's getting tough. My number two, uh, four has got to be Van Halen 2. I mean, I love it, but it's got to be my number four. Um, you know, Out of Love Again. I mean, phew, all of it. Light Sky. Last three tracks, man. DOA, Women in Love, Beautiful Girls. You know. Oh, yeah. Hard. And then they have that. Do you remember Saturday Night Live did a uh, spoof with Adam Sandler and uh, Chris Farley? And it was called Schmitz. Do you remember? It was like a... a, 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 a a spoof on it yeah i won't get into the whole skit but they did they borrowed beautiful girls for that and i remember watching that on tv and uh and then going back and listening to van halen 2 more after it and being like yeah i need to listen to this more again so i don't know just that whole album for me is like it feels angry and aggressive and raw and like i mean the the pickup on that album uh to me it almost sounds like i don't know if you know johnny but it almost sounds like there's a hotter pick up in that guitar and that bumblebee it almost sounds like a super distortion or something it sounds like it's just i don't know the tone on that album is just way different than anything else to me mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's it's definitely it's i think it's a little a little hotter yeah and and like when i was talking about that record earlier which what that was my number my number 10 mm -hmm. <laughs> i guess um and this list could change you know Oh yeah, sure. It could. It could. Depend it depends on depends on your mood. Depends on mm -hmm. how you feel. Right. Like, you right. know, whatever one, you know, you have in your in your tape player, you know, or whatever. Um there's definitely there's definitely a, a hotter sound to the guitar and, and a, a more uh the, just the attack, the playing, mm -hmm. you know, because they just come off that first tour. So they were like, you know it's like we're doing this for real you know yeah 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 
Yeah, it's a, great a, a good way to describe it. Yeah, definitely. It's like, you know, it feels like it's white knuckle the whole time, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I dig about it. But that's my, yeah. uh, that would be my choice. That's your number four, Tom. All right. Yeah, so sure. my number four um, is going to be 1986. 5150. Oh. <laughs> yeah. A kick to the gut. That's my oh. number four. Ooh. Great album. Um, great tour. Yeah. Long awaited after Roth left. It was like, oh God, music has ended. You know, what I've loved is gone away and not knowing what's going to happen. Sammy Hagar, I like Sammy Hagar, but in Van Halen, okay. All right, Eddie, show me something. And like I said earlier, after hearing the, the, the opening singles, little scary, but once, once you got the record and, and you hear the – the opening to the album is like, whoa, you know, mm -hmm. smoking. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, at, at that point, you know, here, hearing hello, baby. And that riff is like, Sammy, we accept you, you know. Yeah. Um, at that moment, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. Very so, cool. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sammy's vocal with with Eddie's guitar during that that era. Um, I mean, for for most of it, you know, because Eddie Eddie's style, you know, would was always evolving. It was always kind of changing. And there's something about Sammy's screams. And his and just the sound of his voice with that guitar and it just oh, it's yeah. it perfect. It's the perfect yeah. just blend. Yeah. Goes well together. Know? Very very true. Very, very true. Mm -hmm. And 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 good enough is a good example. Mm -hmm. Example of that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah. Good memories there. Good memories there. Um you know, we went and saw that tour a, a couple of weeks after Roth came to town. We went and saw Roth and Vi, and that was a great show. And um, it, it, those first two albums, 86 and 88, and Roth's 86 and his 88, though, it, it really, to me, it, it felt like that the Roth stuff almost was van halen you know it's like two different ones but all the same but then hmm. after that things they both really got nothing alike um but yeah um yeah so it was a little weird going to watch that show and Roth wasn't there. And when they came out and, and it was on my mind, like what's missing. I don't care. This is good as hell, you know? Um, and th that's how it was, but you know, um, so that's my number four guys. Getting down the nitty gritty. Nice. Yeah. All right, Johnny. All right. Number three. Number three. My number three is 1984. All right. And I'm gonna have to. Well, I I would say that there's something. You know, obviously, 84 was their biggest record with Roth. I mean, the commercially. You know, with Jump and Hoffer Teacher, you know, all those videos. Uh, 
but th there's something very, very special about Eddie's guitar tone. Yeah. During '84, during the record, mm -hmm. during that whole period, you know, during you know the live shows, um, and uh, yeah, that's I don't know, amazing, amazing. So anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Love 84. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember the first thing that hit my brain and we're down right up, up against Eddie's mic in the pit, right up against the barricade looking up. And the first thing that I noticed of, of any, anything was, wow, Eddie's got new guitars. Where's his baby at? You know, um, mm -hmm. that's the first thing I noticed. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And here, here comes, uh, um, guitar pick and another guitar pick and yeah. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> wow. Yeah. 1984, number three. Good choice, Johnny. Nice. Thank you. You, Tom? I also have 1984 number three. Ah. <laughs> ah. I mean, you know, it's one of my top three. I just had to put it somewhere. You know. Okay. Keyboard uh -huh. intro, jump right into Panama, top Jimmy. Drop Dead Legs, man. That's uh, That song just kills me every time, you know. Of course, Hot for Teacher. I love I'll Wait probably like my second favorite song on the album, though. I love that song. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. I, uh, I like. I mean, it's all the whole album's good, start to finish. I, you know, I don't. It's tough to pick one, but you know, I love that song. Top Jimmy, House of Pain. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 It had that really amazing tone, but the song structure of a lot of them reminded me of like the old stuff, and I know some of it was written, you know, quite a few years before, I guess. But it's I don't know. Something came together in that album, and it's. You know, when they talk about an album having an arc and it has the denouement and it reaches this climax and then it finishes perfectly. I just, to me, that's what that album had. Mm hmm. So. Mm -hmm. All right. So. Number three for me. Is. Van Halen one. Yeah. Van Halen one. I I I had got Van Halen two, loved it. Went back and bought Van Halen one. Um, yeah. Timeless album. Um, yeah, I've heard it a million and one times but it still though i i mean it never gets old you know even side b you know it it it, it never gets old um it, it 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 is who van halen is you know that album um yeah, so all right, that's my number three. All right, Johnny. Oh, number oh, two, man. we're getting close. Oh, man, <laughs> uh, man, so I switch these around. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. On mine, <laughs> you've already eliminated all but two now. The question is what two order what order those two go in, right? Yeah. That's a tough one. Yeah. Uh let me think. Let me think. Ah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna leave them. I'm gonna leave them. My number two is fifty one fifty. All right. And like I said, that was the first Van Helen record I ever bought. Um and that was my introduction really to the to the band you know so i i wore that one out like you wouldn't believe 
Um, but since since Edward passed away, there's something very very new about that record now. Like when I listen to it now, when I listen to song, when I listen to Why Can't This Be Love, Dreams, those songs have a totally different meaning now. Mm. Um, yeah, to me. Yeah, and I'm a huge fan of Edward's piano playing. Yeah, you know, as much as his guitar playing. And a lot of people don't, you know, casual fans don't know that piano was his first instrument. Piano was his main instrument. He wrote oh, yeah. a lot of stuff on the piano first and transferred it over to the guitar. A lot of stuff. I, and I think you're right. I think, Johnny, some people would be surprised. Some of the riffs that you're like, oh, it's a total guitar riff. And it's like, no, that was written on piano. Right. You know? right. Yeah. I think some people would be shocked. Yeah. Yeah. When they came out with Jump and... I, I loved it. I had no problem with it. Everybody said, oh, keyboards. Hey, I loved it. It rocked <laughs> me. Yeah. No. I like hearing anything, Eddie, man. If he, you know, I mean, when they're talking about him, you know, sitting up in, you know, in his house and playing cello, I'm like, if, man, I'd pay like a thousand bucks to see a video of that. <laughs> like when I was 18 years old, you told me I could have a videotape of him playing cello. I probably would have given you my whole money's, you know, whole summer's worth of lawn mowing money just for a copy of that tape, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know, like the video of him playing piano at the party when Dave Friedman's sitting over there on the side, like when those things, you know, kind of got released on YouTube to the public, I guess people had, you know, Johnny, you might've seen that years before that. But like to me, seeing any little bit like that, you know, especially pre-internet, like any little, I remember, you know, when I got my first copy of Live Without a Net and I'm like, you know, just being able to see Eddie do this stuff up close blew my mind. You know, yeah. I'm like, how is this legal that you can get this tape of him doing this up close? But I literally like, and I think you've talked about this, Johnny, I would go home every day after school and put that VHS and I wore out two copies of Live Without a Net and I bought a third copy. I don't have any of them now, but I wore through, I stretched it out. I wore through two VHSs. You know? Yeah, S same here. Same here. I'd, I'd watch that every day after school and uh, just uh, all the time. And I'm trying to find a picture real quick. Oh, go ahead. You, you're talking about Eddie playing cello. I have a picture. Oh, wow. Actually, I, ha I have several over the years, but how would I find this? Uh, nah, it's not that one. Anyway, I'll I'll find it. I'll find I'll tell you it. What, if you can't find it, you can post it in your Discord. Then, uh, if if no one's checked out oh. Johnny Bean's Discord, oh, there, there we go. go. Yeah, there we go. Okay, he is one of the most amazing Discords. If you like Van Halen or just you know music or having fun in general, it's always hopping over there. It's like it's like your local neighborhood bar where there's always at least a few people there. It's like, oh, Bob's here, Steve's here, Dave's here, oh yeah, Amy's here. Like, there's always people in there. It's great, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's always happening, and I know that because I get the notifications every and, time somebody posts something new. My phone goes off, ding, 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 and, and I hear about it. And I think Johnny, your Discord is the only place where I've actually gone in and been like, oh my gosh, I might never have seen that picture of Eddie before. Like, right, you know. Because everywhere yeah. else we look on the internet and it's like, oh, I've seen that a hundred times. I've seen that. I've seen that. You know? <laughs> but in Johnny's Discord, you can look and it's like, no, I've never seen that picture. Cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Awesome. I, I found it. I found it. Can Am I able to? No, I can't. See, I'm never on this side of it, of StreamYard, so I can't. Oh, can he share? I can't highlight myself. But here, here's a, here's a picture of Eddie. Oh, wow. Cello. Wow. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Nice. <laughs> that's so cool. And that's our friend Glenn LaFerman took that picture. That's awesome. He'll he'll be on my show pretty soon. Uh, uh oh. That's okay. That's that's Google. What do you call I, remember I get that. like I get the alerts for like oh, bad ale and stuff. See, I, that's how I, I know all this stuff because I get the alerts for everything. <laughs> I remember seeing Eddie wearing that shirt though in a bunch of pictures. There must have been a ton of pictures taken either that day or around that time. 
it looks like about the era that he was over at Jason's. Uh, no, it, actually, it was it was probably uh, 10 years, 10, 11 years before that. Oh, Ooh. really? Um, but actually, here's there's another one. Right there. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Nice. That's very <laughs> cool. Wow. I just like the fact that he wasn't just satisfied with the guitar. He wanted to play the cello. He played, you know, piano. He, he sang. He played the bass. You know, got a saxophone on there. I think that's awesome. It's like, you know, always expanding your knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 All right, Tom. Oh, this you is got a tough number one. two. I'm going to go with what I have on the paper and leave it, but my number two is fair warning. Um, nothing negative to say. You know, it's my second favorite album, but, you know, start to finish. Love the tone, love the songs. I like every song on it. There's not one thing I don't like on there. The thing I love about that album, too, is that it's, to me, it's, it's the experimental stuff, you know, just like the where you can hear he's working on different techniques or implementing you know, or implementing, rather implementing te new techniques that he's been working on. Um, you know, and then you have, you know, like Sunday afternoon in the park, just really kind of experimental kind of stuff. Yeah. And so this is love. One of my favorite Van Halen songs ever. So, so that's my number two. Fair warning. Okay. So my number two is also Fair warning, 1981. Yep. Um, great album, great tour. Um, that was the first guitar pick that I ever got at a concert. Wow. August of 81, Van Halen, Eddie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. That was the first, that was the first guitar pick ever. Um, yeah. Yeah. I remember it very well. Um, I remember I looked down at it and it had their logo on it. And I looked up. And Eddie's looking at me, looking at this pick. That's um, awesome. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Fair warning is my number two. Okay. Well, here we go. Are we ready? So we are, we are, <laughs> we have made it to the dance. Here we go. All right, Johnny, what is your number one? Women and children first. Oh, awesome. That's something I used to have a paper route when I was a kid and, and, uh, that was a tape I had always playing. So every time I listen to that record, I, I have memories of throwing newspapers, riding a bike, you know, um, to me, that's, that's one of the, that's, that's one of the few records you know where it's just it's just timeless the production maybe there's a little little bit you know there, there's a little uh, you know there's some reverb on there but yeah. other than that you really can't date there's nothing dated to me about that record about this the sound the production the songs you know um better so, so women and children first yeah and I guess with my number one and number two, that shows you my two favorites of each era. Yeah. Roth, Lemon Children First, Hagar, 5150. Yeah. Nice, Johnny. That's a good list, dude. That That is a good list of Johnny Bean right there. Heck of a list. There it is. There I, just made it, I, I, I just made it up as I went along. So there you Perfect. go. Perfect. Nice. Awesome. All right, Tom, moment of truth. All right, moment of truth. Uh, 
I will say for me, uh, preface it by saying uh, my favorite tone, my favorite, uh, it, it feels like it's almost out of control. Like there's this, uh, dare I say, loss of control. Women and Children First is my number one album. Um, <laughs> I all, I, and, oh. and Tony, I'll tell you my thing. I had these written out before, Tony can tell you. Um, I had a paper out. I used to get up at like 5.30 every morning before school and go do a paper out. And the paper boys and women and children first. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I had a, I had a cassette of women and children first. And every morning when I went out, it was dark when I'd go out. And I remember freezing like in the winter doing those papers. And that was the only thing that got me through because I would hit close to the end of my route and it would be uh, take your whiskey home. My route was about, I'm going to say, what was it? 35 minutes and the album's like what? 33, 33 minutes, something like that. 33, 34 minutes. So it was just mm -hmm. about right. If I was slow on my route, it took me 40 minutes and I'd go into the beginning of the album again. But take your whiskey home was when I was at the top of the hill and I didn't have anything else to do and I could walk downhill. And then it was just, could this be magic and in a simple rhyme and I was home. So it's probably as much, um, my memory as a kid, and, and doing a paper out and doing that. And I used to also mow lawns and listen to that album all the time. But I don't know. It's about the, the tone. And it sounds like it's on the edge of just everything falling apart. But it's like it stays together. I don't know. It's just always been my favorite, though. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Okay. <laughs> so I, I guess it's on me. All right. All right. So maybe no surprise, but the greatest Van Halen album of them all, I think, and tour. Um, the one I enjoyed the most, the music I enjoyed the most, still enjoy it. Um, those shows in this particular year were, I feel like the best Van Halen shows I ever saw and I've seen a couple a couple <laughs> um yes more than maybe i should have seen but i had so many venues near me and they toured every year so hey yeah but my number one nineteen eighty four wow yeah. Nice. 1984. Um, I saw him and Roth just said, what year is it? It's 19. They didn't start doing the, the, the thing on the voice until later on in the tour, but. Mm. Um, oh, really? Yeah, that, that, that was about halfway in the tour they worked that up um mm -hmm. or it kind of slowed down kind of slowed down yeah, the voice as they said yeah that. right the only thing i wish that they had have done is during jump um i wish that eddie had have played the guitar part on guitar and then gone in and played the keyboard instead of doing the guitar part on keyboard mm -hmm. the, um solo um yeah but still um van halen <laughs> at its best in my opinion 1984 yeah. Red jock strap on the outside of the pants and all. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I got to meet Ed and Val in 1984, a couple weeks after the tour started. Um, yeah. Never, never will I forget that. Never. Um, 
Yeah. Wow. So. And, yeah. and Tony, what did Valerie say when uh, when you met them there? What did she What did she tell her husband? Well, we're we're backstage in this catering place, and we're the youngest ones there. And I'm I'm 18 years old in high school. Um, and Ed and Val walked in almost immediately, and Ed had his um, stage clothes on still. You know, the rest of the band hadn't shown up yet. And um, we were standing near the door, beside the door, and we went right up to Eddie. Hey, Eddie, hey. And he's with his wife, and he was real nice. And I asked him if he could, if I could have his bandana around his neck. You know, I'm, I, I'm some young Van Halen kid I, I mean and ed he said this one kind of looked at me like and val said oh eddie and untied it and gave it to me um <laughs> that's yeah. awesome yeah it was um that's very cool yeah wow yeah. So, so so do you see pictures do, do, do you find pictures from that tour from on stage wearing that exact one I've seen seen a couple of shots of him um, that night wearing it. I've got it. I've got the PV cardboard Eddie um, where he's got the pink shirt and the short hair. Mm -hmm. The PV cardboard stand up and I've yep. got it around cardboard Eddie's neck over there. Um <laughs> And it's been there forever and ever. Wow, um, that's awesome. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. I I I wouldn't trade all the tea in China for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good stuff, man. I would not. All right, heck of a list, guys. Heck of a list. Um, what I'm gonna do is I. I'm going to post all of our lists in this video. So if anybody wants to look at that, or if you want to give your list in, in the comments, please do so. I'm curious as how you rank these Van Halen albums. Um, but, yeah, so with that, I want to thank Johnny Bean, Bent Tom. You guys are great. It's been fun. Thank you so and, much. And yeah, this, you, go ahead. Sorry. Oh no, this is this has been great, man. This is something, you know, because I I I talk about Van Halen all the time on my channel, and I do a dedicated Friday show now to Van Halen, and and this is something I really really haven't done you know ranked all the albums like this yeah you know and again yeah. like i said earlier you know it, it might change from time to time but but maybe not you know i'm kind of mine, mine may change but not my top two i think for me my top two would rotate you know but but then again like you know with mine my top two is one is hagar era one is roth era so there really yeah. is no right or wrong there there no, really is it's not. It, it shows you exactly what my number one picks would be for each era. So right. And these these kinds of lists, they have to they have to go somewhere. And I I'm the type of Van Halen fan that that I I love all eras of Van Halen. Um all of them. Yeah. So 100%. Yeah. Same here. And I'm, and I'm guessing everyone here already watches Johnny's channel. You know, if you are watching this and you're this much into Van Halen, but if you don't, then you're not really a fan if you don't subscribe and go watch his channel. I mean, that's yeah. like the number one place to go watch anything about Van Halen. Absolutely. Johnny <laughs> is the Van Halen go-to guy. Johnny's links will be down in the script. Um, I, I'm sure you are all already know 
Johnny and his shows. We love it, Johnny. Love it, and dude. And if you're new, go check Thank out his you. old stuff because he has years of great content. You know, I mean, I started watching some of his stuff I had missed and started doing this and working backwards because yeah. there's a lot of stuff I missed. And <laughs> even even like rollerblading wow. with Howie is like great to watch. It's just like relaxing, you know. I dig yeah. those videos. Good Man. stuff. Yeah, my channel goes back to 2006. You know, like True not every, like not every day since right. then, but pretty much every year. I mean, I yeah. don't think I ever missed a year uploading. You know, it was mostly uploading videos back in the day. Now it's it's all live. It's always mm -hmm. the live stuff. But um, you know, I'd say the past six years has been pretty much mostly live on my channel but anything before then there's all kinds of pre-recorded you know van halen guitar tricks uh vlogs yeah um all type all type of stuff all know. great stuff yeah we've been watching you for years you you are the reason why a lot of us do what we do this is you're the reason why i live stream over here on my channel um so yeah love your stuff awesome. johnny all of us do absolutely and thank, thank you for being here so, i mean the first thing i ever watched literally the first thing i ever watched on youtube was one of um johnny's earlier videos doing like van halen like you know doing specific sounds you know like doing like an elephant noise or you know that kind of stuff you know a couple right. of those videos that, which i think you still have the oldest original videos that are still up there and the most well known, the best videos, in my opinion, but like the original videos for that kind of stuff, you know, I don't think anyone has any that were around that early on in YouTube. Uh, there was there was a couple before me. Mm. There was a couple before me, um, but they did them wrong. <laughs> they they were right. They were go. right, and so that's why I did the ones that gotcha. I did. Yeah, and they just kind of just kind of took off. Yeah, um, got I know that's where I learned it watching yeah. years. But. Different places, guitar player online magazine. Uh, um, I don't even, I don't even know, but yeah, that's kind of, you know, I I'd been uploading stuff to YouTube for years before then, but that's where it really started for me as far as kind of where I got where I am today, I guess. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Cool. Thank you. And and the same goes for you guys. I love watching I love watching you guys as well. You know? Um and this has been great. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh for having me, you guys. Well, yeah. Help us. yeah, Johnny. It's been Definitely. a pleasure. It's been a lot of fun. All right, everybody. We appreciate you watching. Leave a thumbs up. Go see Johnny. Has a couple of shows a week. His links will be down in the description of this video. Um, all right. Guys, have a good one. Thank you for being here.